What's up guys, my name is TechNumber here for Troubleshoots and today I'll be taking you through a relatively quick guide on converting images to arrays of Steam emoticons to make nice big emoticon representations of your images or drawings or illustrations to put on your Steam inside of the text box or send to your friends over Steam chat or even leave in comment messages on artwork or someone's profile or even anything like a guide etc etc. You've probably seen them around the place and they look sort of like these ones here that I'll demonstrate with on Google. Super Meat Boy, here is Dallas from Payday, here's Gabe Newell made of emoticons, etc, etc. You can do basically anything with these. Even here's the Mona Lisa, for example. So how exactly do you go about assorting a bunch of emoticons to make this? Well, first of all, you'll need yourself a biggish selection of emoticons, which you can check by going to your inventory, Steam, Advanced Filters, and then you'll be looking for emoticons. I've got 1,300 of them, and scrolling through them, you can see I've got quite a few duplicates, but they do have a very large variety of color, shape, etc., etc. So once you have a good assortment of color, shape, etc., then you can go ahead and make yourself basically any image that you want. So how do we go about doing this so that we can put it on something like our profile over here in our little description box, maybe up here in our title? How do we go about doing that? Well, it's super simple. Head across to the first link in the description down below, which is steam.tools slash mosaiticon. Inside of here, you'll see a Steam ID section at the top where you'll need to put your profile's Steam ID. So I've already put mine here, but how exactly do you go about getting this? Well, all you need to do is go across to your Steam page and copy the URL. If you're in Steam, you'd right click copy page URL. Next up, we'll be heading to the second link in the description down below, which is steamid.io. Paste your URL into that section up there and hit look up. Then next to Steam ID 64, hit the copy button. Head back to Emoticon and paste it in at the very top next to Steam ID and hit fetch emoticons. Now, depending on how many you have, this can take quite a while, especially if you have a thousand plus. If you have only 15 or so, it'll be way quicker. But of course, you won't be able to make such a wide variety of images. So here are all the emoticons I currently own, and you can see that it's organized with sort of white at the top, then red, and it sort of changes hue all the way down to red again, going through purple, blue, green, etc., etc. The more variety you have, and the more different shapes that you have, the better quality images you can actually make. So scrolling down to the very bottom, you can see a step two down here, load image or blank canvas. So this is where we'll be actually uploading our image. Simply hit choose file and I'll be uploading, say, my own logo for this. So Technobo, I'll upload this blue and white one. If we scroll down, you can see that it's selected 30 wide, 30 high, and it's separated it into nice big pixels that can then be converted to the most similar emoticon that you own. Scrolling up, you can see the best representation that your items can currently make. If you don't like the way that it's done, you can change compare mode at the top from RGB to lab or HSL and it may give you a different result each time, but they may not be the best. I'm gonna leave it on RGB because that seemed to look the best. Next to it, you also have quality. Turning this up seems to make it recognize edges and everything a lot better, but it does seem to mess with the image, especially the higher the quality you set. Super odd, but if I were you, I'd just leave it on one. So obviously having an image like this with lots of color differences, etc., etc., is not gonna look the best, especially when you don't have a ton of different emoticons, and by a ton, I mean a literal ton of them. So if we scroll down to the bottom, choose file, I'm gonna go for just a simple black and white text logo. So I'll go with this one over here, and you can see that there's the TCNO, same as before, 30 high, 30 wide. Scroll up to the top, and there we have the best representation of this. It looks pretty good, right? Well, let's go ahead and let's customize it. You can see that you have tool, pen, line, square, circle. You have the ability to move them around. Let's put that back. And then you have this drop over here, which is a fill tool, which will replace whatever you click on with whatever emoticon you have selected. So I'll hit back and let's go ahead and customize this so it looks a bit better. So looking at the top, I'll go with something like this little red pane over here and I'll go to the fill tool and I'll fill in the entire background. Looks pretty good, right? Well, there's a couple of these little black emoticons surrounding the TCNO logo. So I'll just go ahead and click with the fill tool yet again and slowly replace each different kind until everything is nicely done. There's one there, 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 at the bottom, up there, and there. Looks a hell of a lot better. 
but let's go ahead and make it look a little bit more interesting. So it already looks pretty cool. And you can see the current character count at the bottom over here. Limits, showcase 8,000, comment 800. So this is far too big to fit inside of even the showcase, which is the big one on your profile, this one over here. So how exactly do we go about making this smaller? Well, as you may or may not know, these are basically written with text and colons on either side. These red squares are colon red box, and I'm not exactly sure what these eye looking squares are, but they don't look the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and look for a better emoticon. If it's too big, then you can scroll down to the bottom and sort by chars. The top should be the shortest one, so I think this is just colon six, etc., etc., all the way down to the longest named emoticons, and you should avoid these ones. I'm gonna go ahead and look for a specific emoticon. So I don't exactly know what the best way for searching through this list is, especially if you have a ton of emoticons and you want to pick a specific one. If you know the name of it or something included in the name, then it's going to be really easy to find. How exactly do we do that? Well, let's simply hit Control Shift I to bring up the console over here. Make sure you're on the Elements tab. Click anywhere here. Hit Control F and I'll type in the name that I want to find. So I know it's got something to do with Anon, A-N-O-N, and it'll go to the first one. You can see it's highlighted over here. And if we hover over it, you can see that it highlights items on the left hand side. So we'll just remember where this one is. Go ahead and we'll click it. Simply titled hat and on. Closing out of that, fill tool. Let's replace all of these white squares with the little anonymous face. You can see that it's immediately dropped below the 8,000 character limit to about 7,500. Great. So we've done all that we need to, and this is ready to be put into our Steam showcase or anywhere else for that matter. So let's go ahead and hit export and you'll see a new tab opens with this over here. All you need to do is simply copy this, head across to Steam, I'll go edit profile and back up what I have in my custom info box just so I can replace it later if I need. So copying and pasting and then dropping it into our custom info box, scrolling down and hitting save. If we go back to viewing our profile, you can see that we have this over here. So I haven't got it with a title, so hovering over it seems to break it a bunch. If I were to give my showcase a name, that will no longer happen. I've fixed it, and we have this over here. Now I can hover over it because it has a name. This is showing up in the right place. Anyway, small little bug there, but you can see that it's made of emoticons, red box, followed by these hat and ons. Looks pretty cool, right? Well, of course, that is basically it. The tutorial basically ends there. It's just up to you to messing around and making it look exactly how you want. So let's get to a bit more customization. You can pick up the pen tool or the line tool. I'll stick with the line tool and I'll go ahead and pick something, let's say green. I'll pick melon cat over here. So I've currently got the line selected, meaning that it draws the best line that it can. If I drag it around like this, you can see exactly what it does. Just make a line across the top. Square obviously does the same, except it fills in the area. Circle obviously it draws a circle, but it does it from the center point of wherever you drag it and can make an ellipse. Obviously, if you don't like something, you just hit the back button to undo it. You can see the character count dynamically updating as we go through and do this how we want. So yeah, super simple. You can basically make anything you want. And if you'd like to save it for later, you can simply copy paste and back up this over here hit the import button and paste it into here. I'll go ahead and scroll down, hit blank canvas, and it's been reset. Let's go import, paste, import, and there's the image that we saved out once before. So if we go ahead and pick an image rather than an illustration like these, then you can see the difference that it makes. So up here, I've got a super simple image of Billy Harrington, and it works pretty well. I don't have a ton of skin-colored emoticons, or roughly skin-colored emoticons, so it comes out a bit compressed, but at a distance, you can make out what it's meant to be. So it doesn't look too bad, it looks mm, okay. Obviously, you won't be able to do as much customization here for an image with a ton of color difference, because it'll be much more difficult, but if you're into doing pixel art and stuff like that, then you can probably do it well enough. And that's about it. Before we get to finishing this off, there's one thing I need to showcase as well. So say your image has a lot of blank space like this one does here. How exactly do you go about representing this well? 
Well, if we click the export button at the top, you can see that it's put in a BB key and etc. etc., which is just a really dark emoticon as a picture of a key instead of having a literal blank space. This can take a lot of extra characters, especially if you don't have a short named dark character. Like a BB key is what, five letters? If you don't have one that's shorter than that, then it could take a lot of space. Even for this little image over here, it's taking almost 5,000 characters. So how exactly do you replace these black emoticons that blend in well with the background with something like an invisible character? Well, unfortunately, there's no way to do it on the website, but if we go and color in the background so that we can remove it later, or just make sure that it's all set to one emoticon, so let's quickly make it, I don't know, this icon over here. Let's paint in the entire background so that it's done nicely. There we go. Seems to be the entire background. Now that we know that it's a one specific thing, we can see that the first emoticon is the one we want to get rid of. So let's go export, select all, copy, and we'll use something like Notepad++, where we'll paste this into a new document, and we'll replace these characters. It's seawater, apparently, which is this blue one that we placed in the background. We'll replace that with an equal amount of spaces so that the emoticon is replaced with space. Let's go ahead and select colon seawater colon, control F to search for it, replace, and then make sure find what is set to the emoticon and replace with will set to a bunch of spaces. So over here on this guide, there is the void over here, apparently, which is the characters that we'll actually be using. These are a collection of three basically invisible characters of sort of different lengths that roughly represent the correct size of an emoticon. I don't think that you can just use spaces, but let's go ahead and replace all of these with that little space that we had earlier. So basically I just copied it off this guide, which will also be linked below, and I paste them into the replace with section, and we'll hit replace all. Boom, there we go. You can see a bunch of squares, and these are actually that space emoticon. This is because they aren't displayed normally with the way the text is displayed, but it's done here with these little squares. So selecting everything, we can go ahead and paste it into Steam and you can see that it comes out pretty well actually. And these spaces have been represented properly. Obviously I've got that name changed back so it's glitching out again, but you can see that it works. It's pretty cool, right? Anyways, that's about it. That is the complete guide to converting an image or an image with a transparent background into a group of Steam emoticons that you can go and spam on your friends' profiles or even on your own. Anyways, thank you all for watching. My name is Mean Technobo here for Troubleshoots, and I'll see you guys next time. Ciao!